Okay, so after that explosive Euphoria Season 2 finale, we have many, many questions about the fates of the characters. Though we've already made an Ending Explained video that talked about the season as a whole, for this breakdown I wanted to discuss the unanswered questions whilst also giving our theories for Season 3. Now that the finale left Rue being clean and sober once more, the rest of the characters are in shambles with most of their storylines being left up in the air. Many of them are open-ended, and the first question I want to address is what happened to Fares, Faye and Ash. I know a lot of you think that there's still hope for the latter because we didn't see his body, but the surrounding elements of the scene seem to hint that he is indeed dead. Now firstly, we saw the red laser light going up to his forehead, and then secondly, we of course heard that deafening shot. During this scene, Fares was also screaming out that he was just a kid, and if we look at things from a narrative point of view, it also makes sense that Ash would be killed. Fares was very much a guardian to him, and though he tried to steer him down a certain path, it's clear that he wouldn't listen. Ash just had a switch in his head that he couldn't turn off, and this made him kill Mouse and also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the SWAT, even though Fares said that he'd take the fall. So therefore, I think Ash is dead, and though, yeah, they could bring him back, it would be a bit stupid if they did just from a narrative point of view. Now as for Fares, his fate remains up in the air, but I do think there are several directions that they can take things. Now firstly, we know that Custer was working with the police after Mouse's death to get Fares put away. Though there are theories that he died too due to being shot in the gunfire exchange, we do see him being handcuffed and then picked up by the police. It was sad to see his note to Lexi all bloodstained like his suit, which Faye lovingly decreased for him and I just hope she knows how to wash bloodstains out of it too. So, sorry, a bit, bit too soon. Now, Fares was originally supposed to be killed off in Season 1, but he was kept around and he's very much become a fan favourite. There are definitely two directions that they can take the character, with the first of these being that he gets jail time. The season opened with the story of his childhood and it very much ended with the consequences of this, including a small shot of Grandma lying in her bed. Therefore, him being escorted away would be a fitting end for his arc and it would also make a lot of sense for the show, as he could finally move away from the addiction themes and focus on Rue being sober. However, there is a chance that Fares can get out, and it could be a bonus that Custer tried recording him with two devices. Whilst one was put in a drinks cup, the other remained behind, and this could potentially clear Fares of Custer's murder. He'd be on the recording trying to cover for Ash, and due to Fares' quick thinking, the story she gave Custer would clear Fares' name. Fares is also a carer to his grandma who's sick in bed, and this might grant him some leeway. I can see there being potential that he's allowed to be under house arrest in order to look after her, as she is a dependent and therefore he could argue that he's a carer. Now whilst a drug storyline could be closed off if Fez is sent away, one lingering thread remains. That is, what will Laurie do over the debt that Rue still owes to her? Now we know that Rue's suitcase had over $10,000 worth of narcotics in it, and that she admitted to Laurie that it had been flushed. Though softly spoken, Laurie was furious, and she then drugged Rue and locked her in a room after dubbing her up with morphine. Laurie means business, and the fact that Rue has escaped from her has only paused the issue Rue has of trying to fund the missing drugs. Whilst Faye tried to implicate Laurie in Mouse's murder at the start of the episode, the suitcase of Damocles is still hanging over Rue's head. If Laurie doesn't end up in jail, then she will no doubt pursue Rue for the rest of the cash or force her into human trafficking like she implied. Now, due to the end of episode narration, Rue says that she stayed sober so Laurie hasn't come knocking yet, but it's only a matter of time. Laurie has a lot of connections and will be desperate for the money, and I doubt that Rue will be able to pay her back financially. Therefore, they might go down the dark and twisted trafficking route, with Laurie attempting to get a cash back through other means. There's potential here that they might do a really messed up storyline, but I'm actually kind of hoping that they don't, and instead I pray that Laurie is captured by the authorities. In the final narration, Rue talks about how she remained sober for the rest of the year, and if Laurie had have come knocking, I think this would have been brought up too. Now this narration also gives us an idea of what happened to Rue and Jules after the play. Rue says, Jules was my first love, I like to remember it that way, with was being the big word that's signalling they didn't get back together. Rue rebuffed Jules' attempts at reconciliation after the play and walked off on a path to sobriety. Actually went and counted the steps here and was hoping that she'd take exactly 12, but alas, over a decade of Marvel movies has made me start to look for easter eggs that aren't there, I'm sorry. However, this somewhat reflects the ending of Season 1, as it was Jules who left her, but now Rue is the one leaving this very toxic cycle. Rue needs to focus on herself now and her attempts to stay clean, which as we know from the narration, did indeed work. The emotional toll of their relationship led to her relapsing, and without having to maintain this, she clearly worked on her sobriety. Now if you're enjoying the video so far, we'd massively appreciate the thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
had a weird glitch with the first ending explained we did where YouTube basically shadow banned the video from the search engine after it got copyright claimed by HBO. They completely hid it from my channel and after I got in touch with them they said it was an indexing issue but as of this recording it is still gone. I did upload another version but I lost a lot of views so the love is always appreciated and it really means a lot if you support us by just hitting that thumbs up button. Now back to the video and another question is, will Elliot and Rue become friends once again? The pair met at the New Year's party under the influence of many substances and continued to take drugs together despite Jules thinking Rue was sober. Jules' distrust of Elliot was correct as he enabled Rue's drug taking but it was clear Elliot wasn't as addicted as she was. However, in the finale, Rue forgives him for accidentally saving her life, but the question still remains, will they become friends once more? To me, it's highly unlikely as he enabled her drug use and being around drug users isn't good for her recovery. However, she very much seems at peace with him, which is why she gives him a nod at Lexi's play. She's not his enemy, but she isn't really his friend either. It's just someone that's popped up in her life and she now uses him as an example of what to stay away from. Now, whilst Elliot and Rue's friendship is over, there is possibility of Jules and Elliot becoming an item just like real life. Adding the drama of this would present challenges to Rue's recovery and seeing how she handles this would make for some really interesting television. The Elliot and Jules character could end up being used to explore addiction once more, but it just depends if they want to go that way or not. Now, Jules has sought validation in men for a while, so after Rue's rejection of a reconciliation, she might have sought comfort in Elliot knowing that he's into her. That's just my theory, but obviously let me know below if you disagree. Now the reactions to the play blew wide open some relationships, with Cassie seeking to publicly embarrass her sister like she'd been. Because of the portrayal of Nate, he dumped her, and Cassie decided to finally become the Joker. She took to the stage and aired out the issues she had with her sister, which led to Cassie chasing her through the school. Now whilst Lexi was cheered to the point that she came back on stage and continued the play, it's clear that the relationship with her sister is in tatters. Whether they can reconcile remains to be seen, but I do hope they can. Last episode we saw the trauma from their past and how they both handle it in different ways, with Lexi retreating into herself whilst Cassie sought solace in relationships. We don't see the sisters talk after the play, but season 3 should see them attempt to repair their sisterly bond as they've been through so much together. Now towards the end of the episode, we do see the aftermath of the cat fight between Maddie and Cassie, with Cassie having a bloody face and dishevelled hair whilst Maddie nurses a cut on her foot. Cassie explains how bittersweet the fight was as she tells Maddie how Nate dumped her. She's very much at her wit's end as she's made a scene out of herself and doesn't even have Nate to console her. This is when Maddie explains that this is just the start of it. Now this is an interesting line, but what does it actually mean? Well, initially I took it to be something that meant Maddie was going to keep tormenting her and throughout the season, Nate warned Cassie that she wouldn't ever stop. Due to the gun moment in the bedroom, it's clear that Maddie would be putting herself in a lot of danger if she ever tackled him head on, and thus I assumed it meant that she was going to ruin Cassie's life. However, after reading comments from you guys and reflecting on it, I think Maddie is saying that this is just the start of Nate tormenting Cassie. She has of course been through the ringer with Nate and knows what he's like. Therefore, she would be aware that this is only the beginning and that Cassie is bound to go through it too. If that is what Maddie is saying, then it seems like there may be a chance that they can stay friends again after this is all blown over. Now this is because Maddie may have learned from the tale of her employer who told her that she never reconciled with a friend whose boyfriend she slept with. Therefore, I hope that she really uses this as a lesson and will be there as a shoulder to cry on when Nate eventually breaks Cassie's heart again. Now speaking of Nate, what will he do next? Well, in the finale, he sought revenge and got his father put in jail by exposing his recordings to the police. It seems his ambition was simply revenge, but with his father in jail for whatever was on that flash drive, it puts the business at jeopardy. In episode 6 of season 2, it was said how Nate cares about inheriting it and that Cal's sex life would ruin any chances of that. With Cal arrested, it's no doubt he will go to jail and be put on a certain register for illegally filming sex acts. However, I do think the business will survive, it'll just need a rebrand and hopefully this makes Nate finally realise all of the wrongs that he's done. After going to see Jules, I think he might have omitted her video from that flash drive to protect her and potentially the business due to her being underage. There's lots of possibilities with it, but it does seem like Nate is finally done with this and though I don't think he deserves a redemption arc, there are different ways that they can take things in the future that they'll probably go down because this is what television shows do. Now sadly underserved this season was Kat, who at least had a storyline unlike the silent member of Maddie's crew. Kat had a very interesting storyline that saw her find a boyfriend two nights in vanilla whilst she yearned for a toxic relationship like the other girls. 
It was a gripping storyline complete with a moment in which she was visually overwhelmed by competing female ideologies. We saw her return to her webcam ways briefly in episode 7 in a montage and it's clear that she'll be seeking out someone toxic for her life. Hopefully they can resolve the behind the scenes beef between Barbie and Sam if it's still lingering and we can see more of Kat as she definitely deserves the spotlight. Anyway, that's our video and hopefully we answered some of your questions and you enjoyed our theories on where things could be going. If you want to watch your ending explained then that will be linked on screen right now and hopefully I'll see you over there right after this. Without the way, thanks for clicking this. I've been Paul, you've been the best and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.